just arrived at what I've been looking for, which is this here, which is uh, this kind of charred, scorched earth, which is the site where on the 27th of December 1943, a B-24 Liberator bomber from Olkenbury Air Station in Cambridgeshire was off course on a navigation exercise and hit cloud and then subsequently uh, crashed into the moor, moors here at um, Hameldown. All eight crew were killed. Um, this is a US Air Force aircraft, uh, so eight American men lost their lives and you can actually still see kind of remnants of the aircraft. Uh, there's this smelted aluminium. These chunks of what look like rock, but they've got this bluish hint to them and it's actually because it's molten, mol well it was, so it's not molten anymore, molten aluminium. So you can see it's kind of blued, but you can still see that it's definitely metallic. Uh, I think there's, yeah, that, this one here, you can really see that it's a molten metal. I will get some close-up pictures of this with my phone. Yeah, it's pretty harrowing to come and see it. Because obviously people died here, but really interesting and, a, and a, an important thing to come and see, I would say, especially if, if you're like me and into your aviation. Uh, kind of a, a bit of a reminder on how dangerous low visibility can be and the kind of subsequent consequences of that. So yeah, if, if you're interested in things like this, I definitely re recommend coming to have a look at it. Um, obviously it is essentially a war grave, uh, so it would be massively inappropriate to take anything from here no matter how cool you might think it is but yeah if, if, if you like this something like just looking here I've just seen another little thing which is a tiny little screw head which looks like a some sort of like electrical component type thing uh, or it could just be a screw but I mean it's old and it's and it's here so and again there another bit of aluminium it really is just scattered around it was obviously thrown out in all directions and subsequently yeah it's 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 covered in it so this little hints of blue here the copper wiring because this aircraft would have been all filled with cabling like this to con to uh, operate the control surfaces because they hadn't really invented fly by wire by then and just having a little rummage around I did manage to find a few little bits and then this is some of the bits that were found in the kind of scarred earth you've got this um, piece of air aircraft bit of airframe it looks like something from I, forget, I couldn't even guess but it's, it's an aluminium box with some kind of riveting on the back and on the front it's got a stamped inscription saying Sprague 2 MFD 200 VDC. So I'm not sure what that was. I have to have a look into that when I get back. So on a bit of research, we did actually find out that the Sprague Electric or Sprague, Sprague, I'm still not quite sure how to pronounce it, is actually a manufacturer of capacitors. Um, so in the 1940s, they made capacitors. They also made um, fuses for, um, you know, timed fuses for munitions. But in this instance, it will have been a capacitor. And obviously Sprague, Sprague is the name of the company. 2MFD, uh, MFD stands for microfarads, which is the um, unit for capaci capacitance. And the 200 VDC is 200 volts DC, direct current. Now, to try and guess what the capacitor was used for would be a long shot because they were just used in everything. Navigation equipment, radio equipment, anything electrical would have used these capacitors. So it's it's a wild guess to say what it would be used for. But any of the uh, avionics in the aircraft or radios, I'd, I'd suggest. And then also this piece, of, this is definitely steel because it's a lot heavier, a lot denser. It looks almost like a spark plug. Um, see the end there looks a little bit spark plucky, but 
I'm not too sure, but it's a really dense little bit of metal. And then you've got bolts, whether they're bolts or kind of rivets, I think they are bolts. Some nuts, and little components, and then you've also got things like, it's just a bit of, a bit of wiring, I think. Yeah, that's um, solid, solid aluminium wire. And then little washers, and then just a few little components. So just doing a little bit of research into the aircraft and the crew itself. The B-24 Liberator was uh, serial number 4240474 from the 482nd Bomb Group, which was a Pathfinder group which used uh, radar equipment on the aircraft to support the bombing missions right through until 1944. So they'd go ahead of other bombers and uh, scout out the route for the bombers to take to drop bombs on their targets. So there was some great research I found uh, by a gentleman called Stuart Evans, so thank you for that. Um, he explains that at two o'clock, um, it was noted at Elkenbury that the B-24 was overdue on arrival, and they checked with Dunkerswell to think, to check whether the aircraft had landed at Dunkerswell uh, due to weather or something, because the weather was bad that day. And Dunkerswell confirmed that the aircraft was not there, but they had heard reports that an aircraft had crashed uh, 20 miles east. Um, at half three that day, the 1st Division confirmed that the B-24 had crashed near Totnes. And then at four o'clock that day, the RAF station Harrow Bay was handling the details of the crash and advised that the bodies uh, had been moved to Morton Hampstead Morgue. And then at half ten the following day, the uh, American crew, the bodies of the American crew, were taken to Stover, Newton Abbott, which uh, was actually at the golf course, which was turned into an American hospital, the 616th American hospital. So um, really interesting to read about this. And um, I'd encourage anyone to do their own research into it. It's really fascinating to learn about these little things. But yeah, so that's the site of the crashed B-24 Liberator on uh, Hamel Down on Dartmoor. And um, the crew were uh, the pilot, Captain Robert Williams, the co-pilot, 2nd Lieutenant Joseph Hanley, the navigator, 1st Lieutenant Milton Remling, the bombardier was 2nd Lieutenant Lewis Peterson, the engineer was Sergeant Jesse Wallace, the radio operator, Technical Sergeant Glenn O. Wickner, the gunner was Staff Sergeant Henry D. McMillan Jr., and the other gunner was Staff Sergeant Eddie Rush. So that's it. That's um, that's what happened that day on the twenty seventh of December, nineteen forty three, and where those eight men lost their lives in their B twenty four Liberator. Thanks for watching.